Welcome to Visual 3D Basics webinar series brought to you from BassettBiomechanics.com. I'm Dan Bassett and we're going to be taking all of you through what Visual 3D is in this series and teaching you how to work in it right from the beginning. Some of you have never used Visual 3D, so we're going to start from scratch and if anything is unclear, please ask it either in the chat, in the live webinar, or if you're watching this on video, there are discussion groups available and we will answer any questions that you might have. So as for what Visual 3D is, you probably are coming from some kind of motion capture lab where you have cameras and uh, you use these to analyze the motion of a subject. You are probably using some kind of data acquisition software to recreate that motion in a three-dimensional environment, but having it in a digital environment allows you to know exactly where each of your interested points are. And typically you have the system because you are trying to obtain some kind of report or uh, data, something that allows you to explain to a uh, coach, physical therapist, orthopedic surgeon, whatever the case might be, whatever field you're working in, you're trying to get data out of your motion capture system. Visual 3D exists to fill this gap as it takes the three-dimensional data and forces as well, and then it will spit whatever it is that you create in Visual 3D out into some kind of report form. So you have 3D data, forces, EMG, and whatever else going in and out. You're going to have maybe joint angles, moments, forces, uh, uh, muscle activations that can be interpreted more easily by medical or sports staff or whatever other staff that you might work with. So let's go ahead and open the files. What we're going to do is open the two files called cluster gate one and two just selected those two click open what i'm going to do is click up here on model create add static calibration file hybrid model from c3d file okay and what i'm doing is selecting which file I want to be for calibration. So I'm just clicking cluster static. So you notice I open this cluster static file. The, so this is going to be our model file. There's no model associated with it yet. However, it's the file that we're going to apply then to these two motion files. So all I did was click and drag and I select both of these. And all I have to do is click one of the check boxes and everything that is selected will be checked as well. So if I click OK, now we have this cluster static file associated with our gate trials. Now back in workspace, you see that's exactly what happened as the cluster static has been applied to both of our cluster gate trials back in models. Clearly right now in Visual 3D, our model means just about nothing because it's just the markers with nothing attached to it. So what we need to do is define each of these segments. We're going to start from the pelvis as the pelvis is uh, what I think of as an anchor segment. The pelvis moves with respect to the lab. This is what everything else will be defined based on. So we're going to define the pelvis here and then related to the pelvis, we're going to define each of our thighs and down here, we're going to define each of our shanks and similarly, we're going to define each of the feet. Okay, 
This is essentially what we're doing in this session. Of course, it's not quite as simple as sketching it on the screen, but you get the idea. What we have here is four markers for the pelvis. See here is our right and left asis and our right and left posterior uh, or PSAS, posterior superior leg spine. We're going to use these four to define our pelvis. The way we're going to do that right over here, segment name. Quite simply, you see we have a whole list of these segment names. Of course, these might not make much sense to you as they are in the shorthand Visual 3D uses. And the pelvis is RPV, where PV for pelvis, and uh, I always think of RPV as the right pelvis, although we only have one. But the reason that you want to think of it as uh, right pelvis is because it will be defined in the same way that all of your right segments are, as medial and lateral are going to refer in the same way that uh, your right shank and your right thigh are. So we have uh, RPV as our pelvis, the segment type. Most of the segments we are going to define today are uh, going to be visual 3D, with the exception of the pelvis. Right here, segment type, we're going to define it as a uh, coda type segment. Now you ask what the difference is. You'll get to see the visual 3D segments in just a moment. And actually, the Helen Hayes and Coda are very similar. The difference is that Helen Hayes has only one marker on the back here rather than two. So select Coda as your segment type, clicking Create. Now for our body mass. Of course, this is information that you don't have. Our uh, body mass in kilograms is 67.89 and our height in meters is 1.7. So go ahead and enter those right there. Click OK. You see automatically Visual 3D guesses at what the markers should be, as the CODA segment is a predefined uh, segment based on uh, the Bell papers from 1989 and 1990. And uh, it uses these four markers to define the whole segment. So the right ACES, left ACES, right PSAS, and left PSIS. You see there's a little checkbox down here. It says use calibration targets for tracking. What that means is, if it's checked, it's going to pick these markers up here to define this segment during motion. As this is a static trial, and we're defining the segment in the static trial using these markers, and it's basically asking us, do you want to do that for the motion files as well? In this case, yes, we are going to define it as such. So all you have to do is click the X, and now you have your pelvis defined here in your list of segments. Currently, we don't have a pelvis defined in our uh, viewer because it hasn't been built yet. So you see this little button right down here, it says build model. If you click it, now we have a pelvis. Before we built the model, all we had were dots. Now, if we go back to signals and events, you'll see we have an actual pelvis. Now our pelvis exists even for motion trials. The pelvis is clearly a very boring segment to define as almost nothing was involved because we used a coda type pelvis. Let's go ahead and define our thigh. So first thing first, let's start with the right thigh. That's RTH, RTH for right thigh visual 3d type i'm going to click create now, if you're wondering what this kinematic only segment is each of these segments can have a mass to it now when you define these as long as it's a standard segment like a pelvis a thigh a shank a foot torso head uh, pretty much anything in the human body 
Visual 3D is going to automatically assign it inertial properties, so weight, shape, and therefore, if you have force plates in your lab, Visual 3D, as we'll discuss in the next session, Visual 3D will be able to calculate uh, joint kinetics, such as joint moments, powers, and forces. If you check this box, it tells Visual 3D you don't need to do any of the inertial um, calculations for this segment because we don't care. It saves processing power, but then in the end, you end up without the ability to do these other calculations. Since we are going to use this model in other sessions, leave that unchecked. So click Create, and you see now we have this nice little interface to define our thigh. But to define our thigh, we actually need to uh, consider how we're going to define it. As we uh, do this, we need to uh, go back to geometry and figure out a few uh, important details. As we're defining each of these segments, we need to know what the minimum requirements to do this are and how much beyond it we need to go for each of them. If we have one marker, we could have any number of lines passing through it, okay? So that doesn't help us define much. It only tells us one point in space, but it could be in pointing any direction and around uh, any axis. So that's not very helpful. If you consider uh, a line as defining something like a segment, that helps you. The problem with only two markers is that if we use it to define the segment, it could be rotated at any point around this line. So two markers are not enough. We need to be able to define the rotation so it's not just freely spinning in space. We need at least three markers for every segment at all times. Both definition and dynamic tracking, um, we need three markers at all times. Hope that's uh, clear so that you can uh, get the most out of that. What we're going to do now to define here, the thigh here, we want to define the top of the thigh as a circle and the bottom as a circle so that the thigh becomes a cylinder. It is quite clear, as I drew here, that um, the bottom here, we have the right knee uh, right lateral knee marker and the right medial knee marker that can easily define the distal end of our thigh. The problem is we don't have anything that we tracked, uh, that we put a marker on to define the proximal end of our thigh, which is why we used a coda type pelvis because as part of those papers as, that I was referring to, uh, from Bell in 1989-1990. From the ACES and PSIS markers, you they defined the location of the hip joint center. So you see, I just right-clicked on the ba uh, background here, and I'm going to select View Landmarks. I'm not sure if uh, you can see that very clearly as it's kind of a dark purple, but this is the right hip marker that was calculated by Visual 3D because we defined the pelvis as a coda type segment. It created this landmark for us based off of those other markers. Knowing that we have a right hip joint center marker, we can now go through and define the proximal end and distal end using three markers. Those three markers are the right hip, the lateral knee, and the medial knee. So conceptually, that covers what we're about to do. Now let's actually do it. The right knee is clearly not lateral or medial. So not lateral, not medial. It's the joint center on the proximal end. The joint center it's going to be right hip. 
Okay. Obviously, the lateral uh, distal marker is going to be defined by the right lateral knee marker. If you're unsure what anything is called, you can always just click that marker. It says RL knee. So the lateral is RL knee and the medial is RM knee. So now we have our three markers. The only problem with having these three markers is that we don't quite have enough to define the circle on the proximal end. Though three markers are enough to define the orientation of our segment, they aren't quite enough. We don't need another marker, but what we do need is one more piece of information. So the radius here is going to be defined as this distance to the green. It's the distance between the joint center and the outer part of uh, this circle. Obviously, the radius should be the same on both sides because the joint center is in the middle of that circle. Conveniently, since we have the right hip and left hip, so you see we have the right hip and left hip, and we'll later on define the left thigh as well, and they meet in the middle, what we can do is take the distance between right and left and just divide it in two parts. So this radius is just going to be half the distance between right and left hip. So the radius we know is going to be half the distance between right hip and left hip. So to do that, half is the same as doing 0 0.5. So I'm just going to type 0 0.5 in this uh, radius box times. And Visual 3D has a very convenient command called distance. So I just type in the word distance, parentheses, and I'm just typing in right underscore hip then comma left underscore hip close the parentheses so what this com uh, command is doing uh, as you may have figured out distance is just calculating the actual distance between right hip and left hip so just real quick to uh, in case I went too fast it's 0 0.5 times distance. Open parentheses, uh, right hip. Comma, left hip. Remember they're underscores, not hyphens. If you use something else, it won't work. Now, we have the option to use our calibration targets for tracking again. However, uh, I know that these markers right here are going to be taken off our dynamic trials as they're just static markers. So we need to select which markers will be used for the dynamic tracking. See right here, this is RTH1, RTH2, RTH3, and RTH4. What we're going to do is select them from the list. You can click inside the boxes. So RTH 1, 2, 3, and 4 should be selected in this bottom box right down here. Because this is saying that we're going to use these four markers to define this segment dynamically. Okay, now if I click apply, you see a femur just appeared.